Are you saying what I think you're saying? We've discussed it. It's time. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 canceled superhero TV shows we never got to see. You know, that siren was just the beginning. There are creatures in the deep you couldn't imagine in your worst nightmares. You're right. I'm not Khalil. I'm Painkiller, but he sent me to get you, not kill you. You might think you're a hero, but that doesn't make you one. Of course it does. I'm your friendly neighborhood squirrel girl. For this list, we're looking at series based on heroes and heroines that never made it past the pilot stage. Shows that are currently stuck in development hell and TV movies meant as backdoor pilots will both be included. Since some of these canceled programs were spin-offs, beware of spoilers ahead. Which of these canceled shows would you have tuned into? Let us know in the comments. Now, let's go. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. Number 10, Generation X. Well, kids, what do you think of your new uniforms? In the Generation X TV movie, a mutant nicknamed Jubilee accidentally displays her mutant powers during an intense arcade session and is taken by authorities. Fortunately, Emma Frost and Sean Cassidy, a.k.a. Banshee, offer her a home in Xavier's school for gifted youngsters. And basically, she shoots fireworks. That's right, darling. We're mutants. Your mother asked us to take you. Take me where? The film seemed to set up a show where young mutants would grow to use their powers wisely. However, the low-budget feel of the movie and choice to cast a white actress to play the traditionally Chinese-American Jubilee hurt the project right out of the gate. A recasting and more cash could have made Generation X into a great exploration of mutant prejudice and triumph. Instead, it's just another lackluster X-Men project that didn't go anywhere. I respect your honesty and I'll tell that to your parents. You're expelled. Number 9. Wonder Woman. Show me where the people are quarantined and nobody else gets hurt. Ma'am, I happen to be a big fan, and I know you're good, but there's one of you and 20 of us. Before Gal Gadot stepped into Wonder Woman's shoes, actress Adrienne Palicki was set to bring the character to television. She would have starred in a show that would have seen the Amazon try to live a triple life as a CEO, superheroine, and regular civilian. This odd setup wasn't helped by the pilot's pacing issues and seemingly random plot turns. Certain sounds, they bug me. The cry of a baby, bark of a dog, snap of an arm. However, the show's action scenes showed some real potential, and actors like Pedro Pascal, who would ironically go on to star in Wonder Woman 1984, and Palicki showed real commitment to their roles. Unfortunately, their talents couldn't carry the famous Amazon warrior to a full series. I want it redesigned. Number eight, Hellfire. It's people don't disappear. Colonel Hendry was there. He was there, McCone, in the Hellfire Club. Colonel Hendry. I agree with you, General. There have been many interpretations of the Hellfire Club and Marvel properties over the years. This shady organization is usually full of wealthy benefactors, morally gray figures, and a few villains who all want to influence society in major ways. In the 2010s, Fox was planning to produce the series where an agent would investigate the Hellfire Club in the 1960s. However, the series was never able to get traction. Fans got a feel for what the show would be like when the Inner Circle group appeared as antagonists in Fox's gifted show. We have many enemies. What do we want? It's simple. We want to feel safe. We want freedom. None of that happens unless mutants have a place of their own. But we still can't help but be curious about what a show that revolved around the mysterious Hellfire Club would have looked like. The moment we've been waiting for has finally arrived. Our actions in the next 24 hours will determine the course of mutant history. Number 7. Painkiller Anissa. I'm not like you and your family. I don't go out there trying to be some kind of superhero. 
Painkiller could end up killing a lot of innocent people. A series of tragic events gave Khalil Payne a twisted second personality named Painkiller. This alter ego had the ability to poison people with a touch and had no problem hurting enemies. Although Khalil and Painkiller struggled for control for a while, they seemed to be coming to an understanding by the time their backdoor pilot aired in Black Lightning's fourth season. And if things get real bad, then you'll finish. Understood. I'll be on my best behavior. Fans saw the two work together to stop villains in an emotional plot full of fantastic fight scenes. Unfortunately, viewers later found out that this promising premise wouldn't be moving forward as planned on the CW network. Fans are still holding out hope that a network like HBO Max can save them from this show's painful cancellation. I don't want to die. I want to live. The part of you that is me will live if I live. Number 6. Marvel's Most Wanted Miss Morris, I am Yoni and I hear. There's no one else to help you, nowhere to run. The heroine Mockingbird nearly led three different shows. Marvel's Most Wanted was the third and most promising of them all. It would have starred Adrian Palicki as Bobby Morse, aka Mockingbird, on the run with her ex-husband Lance Hunter. They would have teamed up with Delroy Lindo's Dominic Fortune to stay under the radar. Since fans got to know Bobby and Hunter through their appearances on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., the premise didn't require much setup. This is the job. We have to make certain sacrifices, like free time. Where do you draw the line? The sacrifices we've made, the compromises we've made. But after the duo's touching send-off from that show, Marvel's Most Wanted never got off the ground. It's doubtful that fans of Mockingbird and Hunter will even get to see the pilot they shot for what could have been a thrilling adventure series. If there's a way out of this, I can't see it. Not where everyone wins. Number 5. Untitled Dead Man Series His spirit was called by the goddess Ramakrishna. She took pity on him and gave him the power to possess the living so he could bring his killer and others to justice. Although Dead Man isn't exactly a household name, he has an interesting story that's worth knowing. He was originally a circus performer who was slain during one of his shows. Dead Man's story continues after a goddess gives his spirit the ability to jump inside and control living creatures. Is that you, Boston? Yeah, yeah everything is, uh, boy, this guy's mind is tough. Can't hold. Since he tends to have mystical adventures and switches identities, his show could have been a fun cross between the body-hopping antics of Quantum Leap and Supernatural. The latter show's creator was even attached to make a Dead Man series, but this spiritual hero never got a chance to show off his unique skills in his very own show. Now, Boston, drink a drink, drink. Number four. Green Arrow and the Canaries. Sure you're ready for this? One way to find out. During Arrow's seventh season, viewers were introduced to Oliver's future daughter, Mia, in a series of flash forwards. After having a season's worth of adventures in the future, she journeyed into the past, fought alongside her father, and made alliances with Laurel Lance and Dina Drake. The chemistry Mia had with those powerful women built up to a fun backdoor pilot in season eight. The three of you against all of us. I'll take those odds. So will we. While the Green Arrow and the Canaries episode was well received, the show it was meant to launch never took flight. What made this cancellation particularly frustrating was the fact that the backdoor pilot ended on a major cliffhanger. Fans who had enjoyed the past Arrow adventures and those who were looking forward to Mia's spinoff were both left disappointed. But I'm also going to protect my father's legacy. Mia, living a double life is really hard. Well, somebody once told me that being a hero is the hardest thing you can do. Number three, New Warriors. New Warriors. These are LMDs, life model decoys. And with the touch of a button, I can have you fight anything imaginable. Marvel assembled a lineup of heroes that were going to make us laugh for the company's New Warriors pilot. 
Heroes like Speedball, Mr. Immortal, and Squirrel Girl would have all starred in this live-action comedy series. Drop the money, Scuzz Bucket, or face the wrath of Squirrel Girl. There were also plans to turn the legendary Keith David into the big-headed villain Modoc. Although the pilot and its wild concepts were well-received by the network Freeform, the TV channel said they couldn't make time to air the series. A few behind-the-scenes images are all fans have left of this comedic show. Sadly, our dreams of watching a cackling Keith David fight an energetic squirrel girl may never come to be. You gonna stop me, little girl? You in one army. Um, this one. <laughs> Number 2. Aquaman Arthur, if you look hard and long enough into the deep, something's going to start looking back. After Smallville successfully brought Clark Kent to the small screen, Aquaman was set to star in a series on the WB network. The pilot featured a young version of the hero who tried using his aquatic powers for good while piecing together the mystery surrounding his origins. Outside of decent effects for the time, we saw Ving Rhames as a cool lighthouse keeper, Adrian Palicki in yet another superhero pilot as a villain, and Justin Hartley's fun interpretation of Aquaman. This is insane. I'm a dive shop owner. I'm not the protector of the seven seas. But the series sank when the WB channel merged with the UPN to form the CW network. When this pilot was released on iTunes, it spent time as the top downloaded TV show. There was clearly a desire to see Aquaman's show take to the seas. You have so much potential. I hate to see it go to waste. Look, I messed up. Before we feature our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Nick Fury. Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. David Hasselhoff wasn't enough to get this campy backdoor pilot a full series. Damn it, Fury, what do you think you're doing? You're endangering the mission! You comic book coward! Daredevil and the Black Widow. Angela Bowie tried and failed to bring this legendary duo into live action. But if there's a stunning woman with questionable character in the room, Matt Murdock's gonna find her and Foggy Nelson is gonna suffer. Doctor Strange. This trippy sorcerer show would have featured the legendary Jessica Walter as a villain. In the name of Royal, scourge of demons, I command you, release me! <laughs> what a novice you are at this, Stephen. Series based on Tigra and Dazzler and Howard the Duck. Both were meant to build up an animated crossover with Hitmonkey and Modoc. Are you sure we should keep screwing with time travel? I know how time travel works. Now, quick, through the Dory Door thing before the wavy stuff closes. X-Men Pride of the X-Men. This canceled animated series could have given us more mutants. Well, Wolverine, you were against Kitty being a member of the team. What do you think now? So the kid got lucky that don't make her an X-Men. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Deadpool – The Animated Series No, I'm talked about in the same sentence as Jesus. Passion of the Christ, then me. At least domestically. We beat them overseas. Deadpool's ability to break the fourth wall with funny jokes and recover from most injuries made him the perfect superhero for a cartoon series. And Donald Glover, who created the Emmy Award-winning show Atlanta, was co-running the Merck's show with his brother Steven. The sharp and sometimes absurd humor that Atlanta relies on would have been perfect for Deadpool. Cheers. But despite the hype and momentum for this project, FX Networks ultimately didn't push the Mercs show forward. Donald Glover later wrote a story where Deadpool criticizes Marvel and FX for the decision and posted it on Twitter. This script will be the closest fans get to his version of a wild and hilariously animated Deadpool show. I'm so sorry. Don't be. Don't be. I've been trying to make this happen for a while. Yeah, please just don't. Don't leave me, I don't want to die without an audience. Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here.